a night out on the town. A heavy traffic jam. I'll tell you something, I'm not gonna miss this fight. And one wrong turn. You broke rule number one. Do not steal from me. Oh boys, rule number two, no witnesses. Come on! Don't move, don't whisper, don't even breathe. Emilio Estevez, Cuba Gooding Jr., Dennis Leary. No, Frank, after I kill you, I think I'm gonna pay a little visit on that wife of yours. Ah! Judgment Night. <laughs> All right. All right, good evening, fight fans. Welcome to tonight's main event in the red corner, weighing at 760 pounds, Frank and Friends. And in the blue corner, weighing at even 800 pounds, it's the Fallon Four. Who will make it to morning by surviving Judgment Night, the post-pounding <laughs> thriller we will discuss in the first episode of 2024 by the Seaman on Film. And the seamen with us tonight are Seaman Drew. <laughs> Hello. Seaman Axel. Hey. Seaman Molly. Welcome. Thank you. Seaman Joe. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Seaman Judge McKnight. And myself, Seaman Stratix. What do you think? For uh, we still haven't done any semen stain or semen lips. Who was my roommate in? <laughs> Poor soul. Semen lips is a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because his name. Well, tonight we're just uh, we our, our movie for the month of December 2023 that we're discussing here, January 8th, 2024. Um, was Judgment Night, a 1993 thriller starring Emilio Estevez and Dennis Leary, Cuba Gooding Jr. Is there anybody else we should... We'll say Stephen Dorff. And Peter Green, who's always playing the same bad guy yeah. in every mm-hmm. every movie you see him in. With um, the same haircut. Same haircut, <laughs> maybe a weird earring. Uh, 1993, highest grossing movie. Does anybody want to take a stab at that? Jurassic Park. Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. You look. You look this one up, Herschel, or is that in your head? No, I lived there. So I mean, you know, I, I, in I lived Jurassic it. Park. Yeah, yeah, I lived it. You know, it's a big deal. It's a big deal when that came out. That island. Yeah, yeah it's a good one. Yeah, Sabrina uh, Molly. Seaman no, Molly was one was years old whenever this came out. What? Okay. I might have been four. Been four. Um, anybody know the best-selling album worldwide? In 1993? 93. Um, Let's see. I was in... Was, was it, it Crack Review? It's a uh, grunge. In crack utero. Review was a little bit later. Well, it's not grunge. Uh, I was saying it's the grunge era. What would you say? Axel? I said in utero. I said in utero, no? no. I said Bush 16 Stone. Mm. Now, you guys are a little bit early with 16 Stone and Crack Review. Well, yeah. It is a uh, it is a movie soundtrack though. Jurassic Park. <laughs> Jurassic Park. <laughs> the, the Crow soundtrack. That was, Jurassic that was, oh, man. Man. The Crow soundtrack. No, it's my the Bodyguard soundtrack. Whitney Houston. Oh. She'll always sense. love you. Huh. It threw us off that the makes sense. Things. Well, Judgment Night itself was rated a six point six out of ten. Um. According to what? That's IMDb. <laughs> so that's just IMDb users, I guess, rating it. Um, this is back when Emilio Estevez was doing movies. And he was a star. It's funny they didn't use his real life, you know, brother, as his little brother in this movie. I mean, maybe Charlie Sheen cost too much at that point. But. Yeah, all that seemed like he's money. kind of a pain in the ass <laughs> to deal with. <laughs> Back then, um, yeah, back then, by that time, he had already shot Kelly Preston. <laughs> right, Herschel? When did he shot Kelly Preston? What, late 80s, maybe? Shot her? Shot her with his gun. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> Thank you for man. clarifying. I, well, I, I don't know. In his defense, it ricocheted 
and hit her. But um, this movie, Emily Westervez was the biggest star at this time. But now, I mean, you could argue maybe Jeremy Piven is the biggest star now. Coming off oh, of that guy, there, right? You don't. Well, yeah, did he ever I play could... a good guy? Yeah, yeah, he does. I mean, if you watch all the '80s movies, the Cusack movies, I mean, yeah, he's he's got some pretty comedic roles. And uh, the good this movie, uh, we'll, we'll just run through this real quick. This movie is your basic thriller chase movie. Some good guys see something they shouldn't have, and the bad guys are chasing them because they don't want to leave any witnesses. Um. I don't know if I like movies about boys chasing boys, but I am the one who picked Bush Cassidy and the Sundance Kid as well. So, yeah. <laughs> I might need to talk to my therapist about that as well. So, um, <laughs> just some this movie, coming up. This movie opens up with the song Fallen. Who was this? What, De La Soul, maybe? Was that one? De La uh, Soul. And a, Teenage uh, Fan Club. And it's trying to paint a nice picture of this sleepy suburb of Chicago, the Windy City. And let me tell you something. When they say Chicago is the Windy City. Looking at this neighborhood, I believe it. I would have I would have been in my house because it looked like we're hitting a tropical depression as much as this wind was blowing in this neighborhood. Just loose paper everywhere. Loose paper oh, and leaves all over this are you, place. Are you, are you just jumping all the way into the city? No, he's talking about the neighborhood. The, the neighborhood. The, the suburb. I'm talking yeah, about the neighborhood is... at the beginning. Where Emilio Estevez lives, and they're all going to meet up at his house. Oh, it looks adorable out there. And uh, it's like a terrible spot to meet up, though. So we're listening to music. We see uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Um, C four in his with a C four Corvette hitting on the honey. You know, I imagine if that girl lives in that neighborhood, she has a husband. I don't know if single women live in neighborhoods like that. Could afford. Uh, that. And then we meet Emilio Estevez, him and his wife are having a conversation. She's kind of reluctant, doesn't want him to go out with the boys because she knows how they get. She remembers the college and what they used to be like, which is going to come into play later in the film. But she's just it, just miss red flags all over the place. Uh, it's a great representation of marriage. Uh, they don't, they've only been married two years. So. I know. And the big the big thing about this girl, she was a senior in high school in 1993 in a movie called Dazed and Confused. Her name is, was it Christine Harnos? <laughs> so she went from a senior in high school to having a kid with Emilio Estevez all in the same year. She yeah. thought we wouldn't notice. Tough being a 35 year old freshman. Yeah. Um, and then we meet we meet Ray, right? Who's uh, Jeremy Piven with a uh, souped up RV with a Nintendo inside. So you know what's fancy when it has the original Nintendo in 1993 inside what the RV. Come? You know? Yep. He conned it out of a dealer so he could use it for the night. He's just going to return it in the morning. Mm -hmm. And Cuba Gooding Jr., I don't know, did he go to Purdue? He had his sweet Letterman jacket yeah, on. Purdue was, <laughs> uh, I'm assuming he went to later. Purdue. No, yeah, Purdue was like the the homeless guy or the guy who was running or something. Yeah, because he gave him his jacket. Because he gave him the jacket. Oh, yeah, never mind. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I did so, not uh, pay good enough attention to this movie. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of it's dark throughout the whole thing because it is judgment night not judgment day that we all will see one day no um, i was spacing out so the whole basis the big town, uh, so she doesn't know <laughs> yeah the whole basis of this movie is they got this rv it's a group of friends they're going to go watch a fight in chicago and i don't know and i know adam's like this but you live in Chicago long enough, you know the traffic patterns. There's no way they should have been stuck in traffic. They should have left a lot earlier. Adam would have had them there three hours before the first bout. Uh, <laughs> you know? I wouldn't have taken my fucking rented bus <laughs> on the first trip to Chicago. I mean, I get like trying to like, you know, like, you know, uh I bet uh, those dudes didn't even prepay for parking either. Oh, no, you know, they, you know, they were just going to find something. They're gonna I get, mean, they're going to get to a parking spot, which God knows where that's going to be that can accommodate a bus, but they're not going to go to a bus accommodating parking spot. And they're going to be like, oh, what's it cost? Like, it sure shit doesn't cost $10. Yeah. 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 Eight spots, spots, so let's see. You know, I, yeah, they, this is, I mean, I 
congratulations, Jerry Pivot, for bringing the best ride possible to take your buds out for a night. But you should have hired a driver at the very least yeah. so you could get shit face in the back. If they were Two. just cruising, that would now, be different. Like that would be awesome. Like if you're if you got this fancy bus to just hang out and party with your friends, then cool. But taking it into the city like that seems stupid. I believe uh, this was the inspiration of the creation of party buses. This movie. <laughs> Nobody had ever heard of it. And they no. saw Piven. So Jeremy Piven did it. Jeremy Piven pre hair plugs. Right. Yeah. Andy and I refuse, and Herschel now, refuse to get hair plugs. That's right. We're part of the bald community. We want to stay true. Natural. Um, I also like to think like, Everybody is in their own cinematic universe. So then eventually, like Piven's sales career goes off the rails, and that's how he ends up at that dealership in the goods, you know, trying to yeah. win him back. <laughs> oh, we're gonna we're gonna go through the alternate universes, Andy. Trust me. It's about to happen right now. Yeah. They get stuck in traffic, then mm-hmm. there's some road rage. There's no reason that fucking guy shouldn't have let him in. <laughs> that starts the road rage. This is setting the table of what kind of guy Steven Dorf is. He's a little bit of a hothead. That's what they were afraid of. Him and Frank getting into a fight. You know, little, you know, he's always a little hothead, though. And then they do get into a little fight, and the guy's girlfriend says, hey, leave him alone. We got Slayer and Ice T in the background. I don't okay. want your war, but they wanted war. Then they got the bright idea. Let's back this fucking party bus up. Go off of the exit. Now I don't know what this exit to nowhere was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they go into some place, like Sabrina said, like a, it was a Staples, except nothing was secured for C in this part of town. <laughs> Everything like, one exit and an escape from New York. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's pretty, it's pretty sick that this city built an overpass over an entire fucking block of neighborhood. <laughs> well, Adam, that's why people are saying. Inner, you know, freeways are racist now. So, yep. <laughs> nobody wants to see that. They want to pass right through it. Uh, the yeah, weird thing the is, stuntman for backing up an RV like a quarter mile on right. the freeway shoulder. Yeah. I mean, you got to have a CDL or something. You cannot do that. That's impossible. Yeah, I, work with, yeah, I, I, work, I work with truckers CDLs. all day, every day. And let me tell you, <laughs> the guys that have been on the dude for like 25 years, Sometimes you'd be surprised at how often they fuck things up. I don't know. They let, Cuba, uh, they let Cuba Gooding Jr. get on the 1MC. He starts to sound like radio. You're just like, okay, radio, get off <laughs> of the 1MC. Yeah. Um, they, they're off in this little part of town, and they're all talk, and they find out that there's a 9 millimeter, right? Is that a, Was it a 9 millimeter, Herschel? Yes, sir. Stainless yeah. Beretta, because he's classy. Yeah. And then... uh. They say, oh, you got this, and they're looking for a map, and then they hit something. They don't know what it is. It turns out to be a person. That person turns out to be Private Willie Santiago. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Willie Santiago can't run from here or there without passing out. <laughs> All right? And I don't know what it is about casting directors at this time, but they're just like, we need somebody who looks like we don't care if he gets killed in a movie. <laughs> because it always seems to be Michael DiLorenzo. <laughs> who nobody he's getting killed in everything he's in or he's getting his ass kicked in everything he's in and they're just like let's make it this guy nobody's really going to sympathize my whole problem with it is the actions of the people in the party bus they're, they're awesome. carrying they're carrying way too much about this person i mean so, uh, molly do you do you stop and go out there and investigate in this neighborhood and I agree with Ray with like, hey, they're scam artists. They jump out in front of a car. I, I don't think they're doing no, that in this neighborhood. I'm, I'm the them. I'm the nice person that gets out and calls nine one one for sure. But they do yeah. do that. They jump out. I remember that happened to me on uh, eighth grade field trip to uh, DC. We had a bum jump in front of our fr- our bus. <laughs> Like that, like in the middle of the day. Yeah. Gave him five bucks and he was happy and walked off. Hmm. Yeah. Some kid it's, in your eighth it's, grade class. You can tell, but no, I would definitely at least poke my head out and see like, is this a fake or is it is it all good? I, I probably would have got out because they didn't know if they hit a human or a dog. And then when I verified it was a human, I would just be like, Hey, it was a human and got back in the bus and took <laughs> off. That way we knew and well, felt like, better. 
Even if you do hurt someone, at least call it in and say, hey, there's an injured person. No, you don't think so, Joe? Don't tell anybody that there might be someone dying in the streets? Three, you can get away with a lot of crimes. I think that if I had been drinking while driving a monster... I, I, oh, no, I well, know. Ray is negligent as hell. Yeah, but I, mean, I don't think he had been drinking until after. I don't remember seeing him yeah. drinking. He was drinking well, they, and driving for sure. Off. They played it off, off like he him. was drinking. Uh, yeah. uh, Judge McKnight, yeah. please hold off on any drinking comments. Um, But, <laughs> yeah, there's... I'm, I'm in that neighborhood. There's, uh, well, there was there's, a, there's, so a, there's a there's a there's a there's a very small chance that I I even I there's a very small chance that I even react to me hitting somebody. Right. I'm and going. By that, I'm I mean, I mean I'm not even hitting. I'm not even hitting the brakes. I'm not even saying anything to the guys <laughs> in the car. I'm pretending like I just fucking hit a box or nothing at all. Actually, yeah, it was a box. I hit like a raccoon or... one time and started crying. Like yeah. I'm getting out of the car and checking I'm on that <laughs> Nope, but also at the same point, an it, injured it, raccoon, it'll take your life within seconds. I'm not. Well, I did not get. Car. I'm not making. I'm, I'm not, at the same time, I'm not driving a, a freaking giant RV in the worst part of town ever created. I, I, so With I wouldn't no be plan. in this situation anyway. But if I was in the situation, let's just get on out of here. All right, Judge McKnight. Yes, I wrote this. I wrote this as a comment. Um. What's the first thing you do after you find out that you hit a person? What's the first thing I do? Yes. Well, uh, you're going to call for help. I mean, are we talking about real or are we talking about, you know, within the movie? Yeah, universe? real. Real. You're going to call for you help and then, uh, and then render aid. I mean, that's... This is a weird question. Yeah, that is... <laughs> uh, but it was Seaman Droop, what do you do after you hit a person? You call for help and then you fucking render aid seems to be the human answer. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, we know what Joe Joe just keeps going. Uh Seaman Molly helps raccoons. Axel, what do you do? In are we in general or in that in real life type of situation? In real life. In real life. I mean uh There's only one good answer. <laughs> I mean I feel like if I'm in that part of town and I'm you know, scared for my life. I'd probably call it in and give a location. And I'd say I saw a car hit some guy and he took off. Yeah, here's a partial license plate. Um, so none of you answered. Start taking swigs of vodka. Oh yeah, no. That's, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. When I was watching that, I immediately was like, "Well, now you're definitely getting yourself in trouble." Oh, like, only to sterilize the wound. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean. The I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> he was calling nobody. You know, he was calling nobody. No. He was going to try and get out of there as quickly as possible. He had a cell phone, a, a good one for back then. I mean, it wasn't a yeah. Zach Morris special, but no it was a cell phone. He, he said, "Oh, it can't connect." He had a gun and a cell phone. He's kind of being a dick here. He's kind of a weasel. This is like you know, I, I said I knew who Jeremy Piven was at, by the point of this movie, um, and he always kind of plays weaselly guys but comedic weaselly guys um but they do see the cops and then they try to catch the cops even they the cops aren't stopping to that like if you try to chase cops like and try to like get their attention they never have any idea i remember uh, doing that in st petersburg one day we were lost on a vacation before i went to uh, no, they want to make it home they don't want to get killed on judgment night either andy <laughs> that's probably true see Yes, yeah, so I mean, going. so we all said what we would do to we'd call for help. I mean, do you take him with you? Well, I, I mean, if we're being real, I mean, you're not going to move him. You shouldn't. That's yeah, no, you shouldn't move him. It's like first aid one hundred and one. Yeah, no, uh, I said that when we were watching it too. I said, "Why are don't move him? He's gonna it's gonna make it worse." But in in movie world, yeah, sure, you take him with you if you got to go. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you why. I, well, they don't know where they're going to go anyways. This is the problem. That's a good they point. They don't they, know where anything is. Right. Nor did they lost. ask him for direction. Yeah, where are we at, dude? How do we get back to the freeway? Yeah. Um, probably and, and they all cared a little bit too much for old private Willie Santiago. 
you know, and, and he dies really easily in movies. I mean, when he gets shot once and he got a rag stuffed in his throat and he's dying in these movies. Come on. This is a, this guy here. He's always playing parts where he's not in the movie for more than five minutes. It's something they should try with Chris Kattan, but <laughs> it's just, uh, it was a weird thing. I'm like, I'm not bringing this guy on my bus. And that was bloods all on my bus. Then you find out that he's shot and he has drug money on him. Um, and then that's when we meet the gang. They bust through the back of the window and they drag Billy Santiago out and uh, start questioning about him trying to run and steal from Fallon. But we shortly find out it's played by Dennis Leary, who spells his name with one N, which is an odd choice. Because I had a boss named Mr. Dennis at a grocery store. And he put up all the signs around the store and he signed them Mr. Dennis. And we would just extend the line on the D. <laughs> throughout the store and everybody's reading Mr. Penis throughout <laughs> all of it, throughout all of Win Dixie. And he always accused me of doing it. And I was like, it's crazy. Where would you get the idea that it was me? But it was. Hmm. And once people saw me do it, then everybody started. So then you're you could just, I was. I was a hipster back then. <laughs> Does that make you a hipster? Uh, I don't know. He's just saying words now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they can't catch the cops, even with radio on the one MC. Uh, Herschel, do you consider this a B movie? Uh, it, yeah, I think I, I would say yes. I mean, even though for the time, I mean, there were some pretty big names. For the early '90s, like you said, this is yeah, you know, this is these this guys is, were stars then. They were. I mean, you know, this is Estevez. This is not Repo Man or Free Jack, but I no. mean, you know, this is Estevez at the top of his Paula Abdul game. Yep. Right. Uh, so I, I don't know straight why up. this it, it, <laughs> straight up before it's he falls off into a uh, coaching youth hockey, youth hockey for seventeen movies. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, Emilio just quit. He said, I'm not doing this anymore. I think he just dabbles in directing from time to time. But and I think he does some stage now. But anyway. But yeah, I think in the uh, in the serious movie critic, yeah, they're going to call it a B movie. Anything that's not, you know, the pian pianist or, you know, yeah. or whatever. It's a B movie. It's correct. This is just a, a straight up chase movie. And if it teaches you anything, I mean, it just tells you don't don't help anyone. <laughs> just just stay in your car and go like joe said joe got it right and you know once we meet the gangsters and they like put that gun up to steven dwarf's face i started thinking steven dwarf is dressed like he should be in the gang with <laughs> yeah. Peter green and and house of pain there you know like he's got the fingerless gloves you know <laughs> yeah like <laughs> How realistic is it that they run through a city and don't find like an open business? Like this is a big city. There's no open businesses. Right. There's no EMTs. There's no cops. There's you're no in the ghetto. Public payphone. You're right. Um, like it doesn't matter ghetto or not. There should be a fucking a window, a liquor store window that you can run up to, bulletproof, and knock on. Like but... there's absolutely nothing open, and I you know it's the fight is still going on, so. How late is it? Like yeah, 10 it's, p.m. I, you know, I, and it's not even 10 p.m. yet because the main event would be around 10 p.m. 10 p.m. ish. So I'm saying, like, um, yeah. some businesses are open. Are they shady businesses? Sure, why not? But there's other people around right now. You're right. Um, you're right because you know once they saw Fallon kill this guy, leave no witnesses. They go after him. They Molotov cocktail bomb this RV, which now you know belongs to Jeremy Piven. And they take off running and they ran maybe 10 blocks, you know, without seeing anything except for paper blowing around. Yeah. And uh, uh, when they finally find a place to hide, it's in, a, in like a train with some hobos that are <laughs> in there. Um, I guess having a soup kitchen. So they were but, they're uh, running away from the city because they put the train. They're not going to put the train like with that much wilderness and stuff around. It was very confusing. Like yeah, you can run towards civilization. Train runs down um, in Union Station's downtown. Uh, you know, 
Yeah, but when they started running, it was all trees and stuff. The metro and stuff, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I stayed around the hotel when we were in Chicago this summer. We went around those like three or four blocks, you know. Yeah. So I don't know where this part was. I know no. the Greeny Green used to be in that area. It's yeah. no longer there. But even then, there were stores all around it. It was close to the freeway. You could hear the freeway from pretty much anywhere, especially yeah. if it's like, I don't know how far you went, but there's a lake on one side, the freeway's on the other. You couldn't have been too far from anything. But it's... <laughs> um, Things don't quite add up to me. They're in this fucking boxcar with these hobos, and now the hobos are negotiating with them. <laughs> they want watches, they want jackets, or they're going to make some fucking noise. So I just know you don't trust hobos. Hobos, did you think were in the boxcar originally versus how many were actually in there? I don't know. They a lot of them dispersed, you know. It was quite there were a like bit. 20 dudes that ran out of I it. thought there was only I thought there was only two. And you saw like, two, but like then I then I thought three. And then yeah. when the door finally came open, I was like 17. <laughs> <laughs> like it, I mean, like I mean, soup kitchen does not begin to describe what was happening in this thing. <laughs> I mean, it yeah. was absolutely. There were so many people in there. I it was it was closer to human trafficking than sleeping. Right. Thanks. Thanks for the F shack, Dirty Mike and the boys. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we'll have that, sex that, in this box that, car again. <laughs> that box car had to have a smell to it. Yeah. yeah. Dorn, it smells like sex. I just close it and go to the next <laughs> one. Oh, we can't hide in here, guys. <laughs> smells like the F shack. <laughs> uh, but if this movie taught me one thing. And we discussed it just a minute ago. Uh, you need to stay in shape. If you're going to be running 10 blocks, because I'm with old Ray Cockring. Um, he, I uh, was like, hey, uh, I, I'm not going to make it, guys. He's he's ready to give up pretty quick. <laughs> he was. <laughs> I'm a salesman, not a uh, 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 acrobat. <laughs> which leads me to, uh, who did you, you identify? You need not to be the slowest of your friends. You just need to yeah. not be the slowest of your friends. Right. Yeah. Joe. So so who do you identify <laughs> with in this movie? Who do you identify as? Do you identify as Fallon? Do you identify as Ray or you know what was Cuba Gooding Jr.'s uh name in this one? Mike. Mike. Um, but I think I think as I think as an adult, <laughs> you should be able to run one mile nonstop, no matter your age. I mean, unless you're of course out of your mind 65 if you're retired you don't need to run. but yeah well define absolutely. run define run for me define okay. retire i'm, not saying, and I are I'm retired. not saying you need to run like a like a sub eight or even nine mile okay but i you're just saying I, don't I, stop don't I'm stop. Saying, a have an elevated saying, heart rate for 15 minutes <laughs> i'm okay. saying if you can't run a mile if it as an adult you should still be able to run a mile without stopping are we talking on level ground? Well, okay. I'm not talking about you know you, the last mile onto the, the the top of Mount, you know, that right. One whatever. of those famous mountains. <laughs> Mount, <laughs> Mount Mountain, but, <laughs> but I mean you know okay. Uh, let's say run a mile in Kansas. <laughs> it's all flat. Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, windy, you get out of, I think you can get out of a lot of situations if you can run nonstop for you know one mile. Yeah. It's a good point. You you should either be able to run or fight. You need to be able to do one or right. the two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, so the background of the characters, as we find out, is that oh Frank was a little bit of a wild man back in his early days, and Mike still wants him to be that guy. Mm -hmm. um, Ray is the guy who's just like, hey man, you know, I don't really care if I die tonight. Um, I'm not going to make it, but. <laughs> They force it. And the little brother just goes along with whoever. You can see he kind of like sided with Mike at first, you know, about we got to have, you know, just adrenaline type guys, all balls, no brains. And uh, he had like a, a scared straight situation in this movie, is what I felt yeah. like his whole story was was like, yeah, well, um, I need to clean myself up before I end up like one of those guys. Yeah. The, uh, Stephen Dorf, I mean, he looked really, really young in this. That's that's one thing yeah. I noticed. Uh, He's adorable. Between that and Blade, which was what six years difference. Yeah, he's a good-looking dude yeah. in this movie. Five. Still a wiener. 
fucking Stephen Dorff. <laughs> Stephen Dorff. Uh, had a lot of women doing the walk of shame out of his apartment in the 90s. We'll just say that, you know. Walk of fame. <laughs> maybe, maybe not now. Um, they do find a place that had lights on, though, and it's a, uh, um, it's a project. Projects. An apartment they, building? <laughs> yeah. You can call it that. Um, <laughs> Section 8. Nobody, everybody in there is crazy, like, these people are so scared. Like they're slamming their doors on these people. We're not going to help. Do these people never leave and they never walk down the hallways? Cause you got to go down multiple floors to get out of this. Island building. Street lights, come on. I it's lived in one time. of those when I not, was not younger. And it's not that bad. Well, yeah. It's, and this is where all the Fallon gang runs into the gang of that neighborhood. And they, you know, they have a talk. There's a little bit of a, you know, we're kings of this area. You're not kings of this area. And then old Fallon has a talk with their leader and he says a pretty cool line in it. Says, you can't take my money, but you can take my money. That's so that was a good line. And he's like, hands him some money and he's like, money's got blood on it. He's like, have you seen any that didn't? Good yeah. lines by Dennis. And Dennis Leary, for you know us knowing who he is and who he's been, he does play menacing type characters. If yeah. it's Menacing and trying to make you laugh, or he's kind of believable in this movie as a menacing gang leader. But I always wonder, like, what kind of gang are you white guys running down here in this area? I was waiting like, for. Your... Sorry, Droop, go ahead. I was waiting for the uh, Dennis Leary Demolition Man. Uh, society sucks, and it made me this way rant, and I think we got it in this film. I was like, <laughs> "Fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> right." <laughs> We're, we're crossing universes again, you know? It's, yeah, Dennis Leary was a believable in this. And uh, they they finally get help from these women who have to show that they're tough. And I'm telling you this, that woman about to swing a that baseball bat, she's not going to be able to hurt me with that. You know, she didn't look like she played softball in high school or anything. I was like, hey, listen, you can swing that at me. But once you do, I'm taking it from you. And then you have to listen. But they let them in and they let them use their phone. This is where they find out that Ray has the gun the whole time, and he's he's going crazy at this point. Nobody's going to make him leave that. You said it was an apartment, Molly? Uh, yeah. A tenement? But, uh... I mean, that's what it is. So these women, they do want to help, and they do see now that they're actually scared guys, and they do want to help them. And, uh, so the one guy... <laughs> The weird thing is like, oh, the kids have a way of getting to the 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 next building over. And they go up there and these they just let kids run across some fucking ladders that they have <laughs> tied together across two buildings. How many have fallen to their deaths? How many of these kids? That, that, give me that. They're, they're like, we heard of these kids that crossed the building, but nobody's <laughs> actually going to look at their fucking rickety ladder set up. So, yeah. <laughs> If I may, before we get to the roof, uh, because uh, what's Fallon? You know he's uh, you know, no witness. Uh, whatever he's got going on. What the fuck is this? Anyway, <laughs> he's talking about no witnesses, and he's got guys with double barrel shotguns blowing holes in doors. Yeah. yeah. How many witnesses is he gonna? Is it just burn the whole building down? Fuck it, yeah. they're all come running out at that point. Like, good lord, yeah. man, yeah. not exactly being subtle. And I, I do want to backtrack and talk about where uh, Sabrina or Molly was uh confused in the hobo F shack. Yeah, the guy made the crazy dude out of all of the hobos in there, made Cuba Gooding Jr. give him his Letterman's jacket. Yeah, that was so a, when they all dispersed. Yeah, when they all dispersed, Fallon then saw that jacket and killed that dude. Right. That was like the smartest thing they did the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> to get away, like giving that oh, other. Okay, well, like you that. bring up a you bring up a good point. Do you switch clothes with some of those hobos? Like <laughs> in Terminator, where he just takes the hobo's pants and throws them on, you know? If that's how you're gonna get away. Yeah. But in these movies, and when you're trying to escape, one you guy wants to go there. Joe. 
there's always one guy who thinks he can negotiate with the bad guys on their level. Right. And it never turns out good. And I call this the Ellis effect from Die Hard, where he goes in, he's like, you Bobby. use guns, I use a fountain pen. Pawns, booby. Yeah. Let's do some. I'm your hand. white That'd knight. Cool. I'm your white knight. You yeah. know, and, and it never turns out well, right? Yeah. And it seems like Ray thinks he's getting them and they're understanding each other on each other's levels. And then they finally just do the bad guy thing and throw him off the roof. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then well, you have the stare down between Francis Howard. Money and, always think they can do whatever they want. If they could just pay it off. They're not used to being told no. Right. So when they get into a situation where they're being told no, they freak out. Right. It's. I don't know if I would have thrown ladders down, but. You know, once I got a crush, sure. But it just seemed like I knew this was going to happen to Jeremy Piven throughout the movie. He was the one who was going to die. He definitely deserved it out of all of the rest of them. Yeah. He, <laughs> they had to make his character unlikable. So we could uh, be like, thank God we don't have to deal with that anymore. And then people would say, well, you know, it doesn't matter if he died because he was balding anyway. And they don't understand how that hurts guys like Axel and Judgment Knight and myself. Are you sure you're okay with your balding? <laughs> <laughs> no one ever that goes bald on the side. No one ever goes bald insecure. over here. It's always the top. <laughs> I'm going to um, need you to stop projecting your insecurities on all of these movies that we watch. Yes. <laughs> but also, like, adventures with Jeremy Piven rarely go to plan. I mean, yeah. It's like, it's going to be a simple thing. We just go do this. Nothing ever happens that way when you're when Jeremy Piven's involved. <laughs> just throw a simple party in the dorm. We'll just you know. yeah. I remember he was balding. <laughs> Ever he was uh he was balding. What was it? Uh, one crazy summer, being the frat rich dude. And I was like, okay, here he is again. Six years later, not bald, but now he's got a full head of hair, glorious hair, <laughs> as Ari Gold. Um, so then they finally get away and they go down into a sewer. What was cleaner? The sewer or the neighborhood they had been running through? <laughs> the sewer, probably. There's running water there, you know. Less rats in the sewer. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 there was a stagnant water in the sewer. Uh, and, in, you know, in these moments of crises, though, this is where... You know, you see a group of friends, they start to turn on each other. And this is where Mike and Frank, they get into it. And then you see the uh, the, the the bond between the brothers. You know, and you got Mike saying, you, know, you used to be like this and you used to be like that. And now he just wants to get home to that high school senior he just had a kid with. So they finally team back up and they get through it and... uh. Peter Green gets killed down in the sewer chasing him with his own gun, with his own gun. And uh, yeah, Dennis... I didn't see uh, Everlast fucking living throughout the whole movie. But that was not on my bingo card. No. Um, it took the... me up until this until like right around this scene that I realized that that was Everlast. <laughs> it took me to. Oh, just yeah. Now. And it's so crazy that it would, because I mean, like I have multiple everlast albums eric schrode yeah um yeah so like i said they start turning on each other even the bad guys turn on each other you know peter green gets killed the other guy who's like the unnamed person in the gang it's like is this what you wanted you know the whole yeah. point break shit is it what you it wanted kind of like a... dissenting from the beginning a little bit yeah and uh so yeah. like what's he thinks gonna happen to him? He's like talking to Fallon. He's just killed all these people here and he's like, oh, I'll kill you. I don't really need you. And uh we finally find civilization as like a, some weird looking grocery store that has bad lighting. Uh, <laughs> they probably didn't tell Alexa to illuminate, but I thought it was like a Pike Place market type of scenario, like an outdoor market. Yeah, we yeah. have the showdown. And and then you have the showdown that ends the movie, basically, between the the top good guy and the top bad guy. And uh, then they want you to think that maybe Fallon has come back to life and there's a gun up against Emilio's head and it's a cop. And I don't, I've been through the police academy and in no place during the police academy, they ever teach you put the gun against someone's head. 
as a cop, <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. But I understand. Some, <laughs> they're supposed to make you think it was foul and but no. And they saved the day. I think Mike got shot a little bit. He's an athlete. He'll recover in two to three weeks. He'll be back on the field. His brother got shot too, didn't he? Yes, he did. They both got, they're both just shot and hiding out in a bathroom. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we, we sent that meme, right? Of the, if you ever get shot right down here in your lower abdomen, you hide it the whole movie. And then somebody says, oh, you're hurt. It has to happen in every movie. So that's the gist of, uh, they, they didn't show like a part two or anything or, him having to explain to his wife why he was out all night with the boys because you know she's seething at home just from the interaction at the beginning of the movie she is seething at this point Duh, they say she's she, there get, she's worried no, she's man, they, they there, tell him is, at the end his wife is outside waiting for him yeah and they, but, yeah i want to see and, part two i want to see the couple's therapy everything i'm gonna to go see. back to what adam said quit projecting stratix <laughs> I wanted to I I want to see the prequel where Dennis Leary becomes gets a bad bit guy. gets bit by the radioactive bloodhound that gives him the ability to sniff out these dudes for 90 minutes. Yeah. In dirty ass Chicago and find him in the sewers. <clears throat> right. It's um, the only way this movie can it, it has to be yeah, and like once they go in the sewers, that's when I would have been like, "Yeah, these guys are never coming out of hiding again, and we don't have to worry about them snitching on us." He managed to find them every time they hid. I mean, no matter where they. I mean, I okay. Like Look, he just wanted to kill to something that belief. night. I'm willing to suspend belief at the train yard. Yes, disbelief. Suspend disbelief. Suspend disbelief. I want to see the. Uh... <laughs> The cutscene where Dennis Leary bit Stephen Dorth, and then he turns into a vampire and takes over his criminal underground, and that's where he begins to be a vampire. Maybe upbringing. that's why he was so intent on chasing them. The the smell of the Francis's blood was just so good. I he want to chase him down. I want to see before that what event in his life caused Stephen Dwarf to say, "I like these gloves." But I'd like them better when I cut the fingertips off. So he's just cutting the fingertips off of his gloves. I'm going to wear his driving gloves. Right. I mean, are you a key grip in a movie? What are you doing with fingerless uh, gloves? I don't. All my brothers and sisters rock, wear you know, that fingerless he rolled up gloves. In. I was gonna say, I, I think they came with the car that he. My drove. little nephew rocks fingerless. Oh gloves. yeah, the Camaro. Let's not forget the <laughs> rock. All right. Rock. I, let's get into some. I mean, is there anything you guys want to talk about with this movie that we haven't discussed? Um, um, I think that I'm definitely a mix between uh, Jeremy Piven and Cuba Gooding Jr. Because I would have I would have done exactly what he did at the beginning when he hit a person, and then uh, as the story progressed, I would have become a stone cold killer like Cuba <laughs> Gooding Jr. Would you have shot at the bus that did not stop for you? Would you have done that? No, absolutely not. No, that no, no. Oh, see, there's a, that's also <laughs> the bus one drivers of gotta be like, well, that's a fourth time this week. This neighborhood sucks. <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> what, what makes you think that they're gonna that's that's gonna encourage a bus driver? Now they're gonna stop. stop. No, they're definitely gonna <laughs> stop if I yeah. continue to chase them down. I'm willing to hit a bum on the street, and not stop. You think I'm gonna stop when someone's shooting at me? Yeah, that, that bus probably hit Willie Santiago last week. Yeah. But here's the thing: maybe that maybe they didn't realize that bus couldn't go under 50 miles per hour. <laughs> they had to keep going. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a. <laughs> but all in all, you know, I guess we can get to uh, we can get to the EMI, and yeah. uh, just oh. so you guys know, I picked your favorite songs for you, Great. and then you can tell me if I was right or not. What and. Uh, Okay. Were we supposed to pick our favorite song or yeah. our favorite rehash of the Predator soundtrack that was going through most of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't really notice that, man. So I'll, I'll, I'll look through it again. Uh, Judge the McKnight. The note I had was until I saw the old style uh, sign, like I didn't realize they were in Chicago. Like, I don't know if it was like trying to see if it was specifically referenced and I should have looked at the highway scene to see if you see like Sears Tower or the Hancock or something, but 
there's up like that. there's a skyline. Yeah, I got. I want to. I want to talk about Cuba Gooding Jr. for a moment. You okay? Back when he was a hard ass. No, this like, oh, yeah. you know, for the most part, I watched all of Cuba Gooding's movies. His good movies, yeah. his renowned yeah. movies, and it took. And I know, why, well, I, I was kind of like annoyed that he never. He's been doing the. Um, I have a baby face, and I'm somewhat <laughs> intelligent, but don't mm-hmm. you, you still respect me because I'm from the streets. Yeah. Attitude. And it was, I found it pretty annoying in this film. He does like he's that to, all the time, too. All the time, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm like rewinding all, all the things. And the only one he didn't do was radio and Medal of Honor. Um, like I'm well, hood, I'm well right? spoken. I have a baby face, but I'm also from the streets. And at, at any moment, I could thug so out. You're talking about in Boys in the Hood, yeah. Whenever he they get pulled over by the cops and cop puts his gun and so he goes, we didn't even do nothing. And then he goes back to his girlfriend's house, starts punching the air. Yeah. Out. yeah. <laughs> that Cuba Gooding. All right. Yeah. Um, and I also I have one more comment, but I don't know if I should hold off until the rating. You can assess that. What you want to do? You want to hold off? Uh, I'll, I'll say it right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't tease us. Well, you can repeat <laughs> it as well. Yeah, I get. Well, the biggest thing is like I saw the trailer when we picked the movie, and I was kind of I was pretty hyped for this movie. And then you see the actors on this list, especially the four protagonists, and I was wondering, like, did they hate each other while filming this? Because like they kept trying to overshadow each other with their fucking performances. That you know. All throughout the film. And I felt that was pretty annoying as well. I think to me, like when you get decent actors all together like, and it's bad, not necessarily amazing writing, then it's going to seem like overacting or bad acting. But it was funny because you could literally see them like pushing their shoulders aside so they could and then so they could deliver their line of dialogue. And there's like a lot of emphasis in it. And it was it was getting ridiculous at points. I, well, I don't know I mean, if it's it depends- hard to pretend uh, your adrenaline is amped up. But yeah. I think, uh, well, Molly brings up a good point that not a great script. You're just running for your life. Yeah. So what would you do if and you're then, running like- for your life? being like the machismo level of each of these guys has to be super high the entire time so when you get them what's macho next to each other it also seems real tacky like <laughs> i mean did you never hang out with a bunch of young 20 something year olds and <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah, have you never seen that like a bunch of bros broing never on a ship yeah. no i would on no. a ship <laughs> <laughs> my monocle you, never fell out you know? if you've never seen him you, you might have been one of them <laughs> like 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 none of these guys ain't anything with high fructose corn syrup yeah <laughs> just pouring it on their fucking steak no because they hadn't gone soft yet except for frank frank had softened up <laughs> yeah well so herschel now the backstory for frank yeah or, Judge McKnight, the backstory for Frank, um, him and Cuba Gooding Jr. met in college at Purdue, right? Okay. Yeah. They're, they were both athletes, and we now know he's from mm-hmm. Chicago. That's where old Emilio Estevez went to high school and stayed in Saturday detention and was he a was wrestler. A with wrestler. A the full ride, I guess, was to Purdue where he met Cuba Gooding Jr. So we go from breakfast club to judgment night. There you go. All in the where spell. he wears the prescribed uniform. Yeah. <laughs> Tights. Tights. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it all it all starts tying together. Like, this is easy. Who do we get for this? It's Emilio Estevez. It's a hockey town, and then it goes, you know. We tied, like, seven movies together. Yeah, I mean, we got some speed. Demolition Man and some Speed in there. We got... Uh, Blade. Radio, radio Blade. It's... We're doing well with our multiverse here. You guys are doing great. 
<laughs> Molly, Molly, this group is you're in this group, so you can be cultured in this way as we are. <laughs> No. You I guys know, do such a interest. good job, though, at quoting all the movies all the time. Why would I want to impede on that? You know, like, there's there's plenty <laughs> of people solving cancer right now. We, we use our superpowers for yeah, culture. like cinematic autism or something like just like, mm-hmm. hey, cinematic <laughs> autism. <laughs> We're on a spectrum. Yeah. Well, I actually have a buddy that that, that he's like. He gets so pissed off, he'll say, like, oh, that movie with that one dude, you know, and I'll say, like, whoever the actor is. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, so-and-so. And he's like, dude, he's like, that's your superpower, just, like, remembering who these people fucking are. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, but... like, I'm like, I, I, I just, I, I, I take I take pride in, like, seeing, like, the guy that's, you know, like, the doorman in a movie and then seeing that doorman... <laughs> Think seven years later, and he's like, you know, the tertiary character in another movie. And yeah. Like, oh yeah, he had that funny scene in that where he opened the door for. Yeah, he's like, dude, why? Why would you do that? How do you even know that? <laughs> I can only ever remember it backtracking. Like once that person is big, and then I watch their old movies, and then I go, oh, that's that guy from that one really popular movie. I, yeah, I don't. But... I don't have that. I don't even remember the actors' names from this movie. Probably. <laughs> usually, ask me, usually but... those. Those people who are saying, who's that one actor? Emilio you know, Estevez, say, every time I looked at him in this movie, every time they turned to a scene, all I could think of was the, the guy who coaches that hockey team. Gordon yeah. Bombay. <laughs> every yeah, single but, time. But the people who ask you that, they'll say, oh, you know that guy in that movie, you know, he was like a, him and a, like some army dudes and some alien was killing them all off. And you're like, Arnold Schwarzenegger? He's like, yeah. Like, <laughs> is that how you say it? Oh, yeah, my God. I don't know. Is that his name? Arnold towards like yeah how do you know all these actors man you're just like what <laughs> the biggest actor in the world uh, that's the kind of you know, Arguably Tom the Hanks, most famous actor in the world like it doesn't matter <laughs> where you are in the world people know who arnold is yeah yeah but yeah it's a, it's a superpower i guess it is a superpower just... i don't hold it in my head i've been trying with you guys for like three years now <laughs> there's it is not clicking. <laughs> Just look around I am that, enjoying look it. Look around that room you're sitting in. It's a good room. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot, a lot to take in. I can tell you about Batman and Star Wars and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And stuff. And stuff. One franchise at a time. I can't, oh, I can't hold the entire cinematic universe. So oh, EMI. So EMI. <laughs> am I? Adam is over it. Get us yeah, moving um, on. I asked you guys to pick me you know, This was a unique soundtrack for this movie. A rap group and a rock and roll group put together to make songs. I don't know who came up with the idea and who got them together. And they all agreed. But I said, hey, pick your favorite song. Judge McKnight, you don't listen to music. I've never heard you talk about music. All you talk about is Rod Stewart and Maggie May. Um, I, I mean, I do. I just don't make a habit of talking about it. Oh, yeah, and then, you know, I, I'd say one of the saddest days, I think it was my first duty day on the Donald Cook, where I saw somebody's 100, um, 100 count CD case sitting there. I said, <laughs> oh, some music. I'll just, my first duty day, I don't know anybody. I'll just listen to some music. And it was filled with fucking Britney Spears and Avril Lavigne. And I said, who? Avril. And the Sea Wiz Gunner's Mate World would own these CDs. Judge McKnight, who was it? Jesus yeah, Christ, man. I bet you I know. Uh, I'm going to guess. <laughs> like, was it Rob guesses. Miller? Say I his name. Say his was name. it Rob Miller? No, it was not Rob Miller. Well, it no, wasn't Dominic guess. Magny. No, it was not. Wait, it was not Magny. Was it Yates? Okay. Magny, he's, he's had three Magny would have now played Stephen Dorff in this movie. but That's um, true. Dorff was pretending to be Magny, but it was Bill Cowan. That's what I was about. I was like, ah. it's Gates or Cowan. It's my I knew it was. I knew it. So, so Judge McKnight, since you don't listen to music, I'm going to assume your favorite song on this soundtrack, because of your weirdness, was Freak Mama by Sir Mix-a-Lot. That's a good one. I actually wrote down, because I did listen to the whole thing, uh, I, I wrote down several. Um, but I think your favorite? actually... Probably, let's see. I, I do have I have notes, and there's things. Yeah. 
I don't know, man. Um, I'm gonna go with me, myself, and my mic. Letting oh, on D and C. I mean, that was good. I love that one. That is a good um, one. Although, shout out to the lyric from Judgment Night. Yo, give me that shit, you ball headed bastard. I just <laughs> that one really spoke to me. That one really spoke. <laughs> Which leads us to Axel. I'm going to guess that your favorite was the Helmet and the House of Pain song. Yeah, I mean, you know, Helmet's <laughs> really an underappreciated band from the 90s. Like, I don't know why they didn't get bigger. He broke them up. Paige Hamilton broke them up. Damn shame. Who, what was your favorite song? Yeah, Is that it? Was, it? Yeah, it was Helmet. <laughs> it's a rock. <rocker. laughs> well, you know Andy pretty good. Yeah, because I mean, like, disorders, you know, like that's half of like, you know, that's really just like the precursor to body count. Well, yeah, probably, but, had body that, count had already come out at that time. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it was just, I'm just going to do this, but I'll say that I'm using, I'm working with Slayer, even though like basically it was the same thing. Joe, I went with Dale the Funky Homo Sapien for you. Bad, not bad. Let, let, let me start by saying that uh, <clears throat> this album is right up my alley. <laughs> I have another, I, I own an album that is very similar called Hard Rocks, and it is a banger. Uh, this is, I, I, I loved, I love new metal. I was a Limp Bizkit guy, I still am a Limp Bizkit guy, I don't even care who knows. And people that say they aren't are liars. They, they, is good, man. they they lived through a fucking musical juggernaut um for like what was it four or five years andy what do you think when yeah, west borland we were when west borland's of, in uh, the band That's... durst and most people figured it out when he did nookie that he was fucking full of shit but yeah i'm okay okay with that I, I, I'm just saying. I, I, I'm, I'm, I still like Fred Durst. I like the way Fred Durst has done all this. But anyway, this is not a Fred Durst podcast. It's a podcast <laughs> about Judgment Night. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you would, I, dude. I really did like that song. This, like this, this has a lot, a lot of good. They're songs. all bangers on this uh, on this sound. I, I, I liked them. I liked I liked them all. I listened to them multiple times. Um, yeah. But to be honest with you. Um, Man, I okay. So the movie's like really grimy. Like the city itself is grimy. It's dark. It's disgusting. It's yeah. nasty. Um, the the title song "Judgment Night" is just that. Onyx is such a dirty, a gross sounding. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Sticky Fingers, I believe, is the uh, the, the the main yeah. you know, the vocals yeah. on. Uh, he's always been like it's just a really grimy. Dirty sound, and uh, they did a good job. I mean, I like that song. Um, honorable mention, though, definitely goes to Real Thing with Cypress Hill and Pearl Jam uh, because I I, 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 I like, I've, I've always, I've been a bit fan of Cypress Hill for a very long time. I like Cypress Hill. Uh, I'm not really a Pearl Jam guy, even though a kid of the 90s. Um, I, I just, they just weren't, I like them more as an adult as I get older. That I did when I was when when I was living in Pearl Jam like you know timeline, but uh, the real thing with well, Cypress Hill or uh, yeah yeah Cypress Hill and Pearl Jam was a solid pick too. But uh, yeah, I got to go with Judgment Night. Fits the movie perfectly. All right, um, my high school band played Slam by Onyx oh. as one of our songs at football games. Uh, I, I, that's another one. Steam and Molly, I picked the opening song "Fallen" for you. <laughs> the uh, De La Soul one. I thought I don't know what kind of music you listen to. You're born in the late '80s, so you probably were after the new metal genre. So you kind of came up. Maybe your teenage years were early 2000s, and who knows? That could have been your Avril Lavigne 100 CD case there. Um, so I did was... like it, but um. I think I'm going to go with Freak Mama. It was fun. <laughs> um, it could mix a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote down a couple of them that I really liked, but I think like Freak Mama was just fun. And that's that's the kind of music I like to listen to. 
that was, there was uh, no, no deep dark message that I that I could not relate to or anything like that you know that was one of the grunge pioneers there two Seattle bands Sir Mix-a-Lot and Mud Honey together yeah yeah I just started yeah. listening to Mud Honey this year yeah really? Oh, you know, yeah. he has to. He lives up there now. He has to live <laughs> sub pop. Um, so semen droop. What do you got? I uh, I pick you. Um, I pick for you was uh, what Joe picked. Judgment Night, the uh, title track. Yeah. Um, no, mine was actually Missing Link by Dinosaur Junior and the Del Del the Del Funky. funky. <laughs> nice. Um, it's cool because. You know, they it feels like I don't know Dinosaur Jr. a whole lot, but I feel like they did their thing and Dale did his thing and it just worked, worked fucking really well yeah. together. And uh, uh, I do want to do uh, uh, my number two was another body murder, Faith No More on Booyah Tribe. Yeah, uh, listen to Booyah Tribe, Samoans from Carson, uh, underrated rap group. Like, check them out. Um, they uh, back in the early 90s, um, on MTV, they had Yo MTV Raps on Saturday morning, so it was about an hour, and the Booyah Tribe was really big on that. Faith No More is a top ten band in my life. Yeah, so. that's real rap rock. Yeah. Uh, I really I'm like Faith No More. Trying to be a poser, <laughs> but my my, my one hundred CD bookcase is in the closet to Sabrina's right, and you'll find a Booyah Tribe CD in there. But that's again, right. Dinosaur Junior, another great nineties band like Helmet, but Dinosaur Junior yeah. still playing. Uh, yeah. they've got some pretty good songs more of an alternative band my pick was and I always say this Joe if I was ever a professional wrestler or an MMA fighter this would be my entrance song and that's Come and Die by Therapy and Fatal <laughs> yeah. nice. that one is played that movie's playing when they enter the sewers Yeah, they see the guys you know across the street they run and get back in the sewer but Come and Die Therapy and Fatal but um, yeah, that Booyah Tribe Faith No More is my second favorite. And of course, the Run DMC is a fun one. I'd like uh, to take a moment yeah, with, um, just to recognize here that, uh, that Chris not only picked this movie with a really good soundtrack, but also the soundtrack to Last Action Hero. This <laughs> was well, pretty good. good. Yeah. Music yeah. seems to be essential to your picks for sure. Well, at least yeah, you gotta have movies. a good he, he Also, keep in mind he picked Final Destination three, which yeah, um, but he did they that had, specifically. Should have had better music, us, Joe. You would have liked it better. Better music like, during the deaths. Final Destination <laughs> three was just a troll us though. Like, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't that doing movie, that because it's a epic. The film. movie is uh, it's fun. It's a fun death movie. Yeah, and it's got Mary Elizabeth Winstead in it and Amanda Cruz. So. I I do have a question though. Yes. Uh, so they went through a lot of trouble to to produce this album and and bring these right. genres together. Um, but the music itself is not really prominently featured in the movie. I mean, you don't, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you it, don't hear not, it in the movie. You hear lot. snippets of it. You will hear Barely. three or four chords, and then bam, it's gone. But hell, fallen. They played the whole song at the beginning, and I got to watch yeah. Cuba Gooding. Yeah. Quite a drive up into Corvette too. Yeah, just you know, during their little fight on the highway. But all right, we'll move on. We had cruise book quotes. Um, I'll start. <laughs> My cruise book quote that I liked. I guess I won't go with the money thing. It's not what I said, but you're the kind of guy that has to check his pants to see if he has a dick. I got one. <laughs> so whenever people in the wardroom are reading that they're wondering was that about me <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go judge mcknight i just gotta do it's it's a partial one uh it's it's while uh fallon was killing one of his own gang and it was uh you know what i hate i hate whiners people who just complain and complain <laughs> and complain and i'm not gonna do the whole thing and it, and it appears that someone else might have picked that, so now you got to pick something else. Ah, <laughs> uh, Seaman Molly, what'd you pick? Um, well, my first pick was yours, Chris, because um, I thought that would be fun. Um, 
It's ironic is what you're thinking. Well, the only one that hasn't been said that I wrote down is <laughs> this is cutting into my drinking time. <laughs> Semen droop. Good cruise book quote. That's a really good cruise book quote. Right. Yeah. We, we're supposed to be on Liberty right now. Yeah, this is cutting into my... Perfect. All right. Uh, I've modified mine a bit for the cruise book quote. Yeah. Attention crew. We have a special over at the ship's door. Dead meat. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Seaman Joe. I got to my first ship in 2003. This is not the quote from the movie. This is just me speaking about that. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what? <clears throat> so, have a monologue. Uh, so some of these old dudes had been in the had been in the Navy since like, you know, 93. <laughs> Maybe even like, you know, 83. Fuck, I don't know. Uh, but um as you're pulling into your first port of your entire lifetime some of these old sailor guys might have said something to the effect of prepare to have your pleasure glands carpet bombed <laughs> so gross <laughs> that no. was uh, uh the razor as soon as he razor. showed as he showed everybody the uh the the rv it's in like the first like five minutes of the movie it's fucking hilarious though i totally missed it that's disgusting. It's so <laughs> gross. But as soon as I heard it, I was like, I mean, I could see his face. I know exactly who I'm thinking of saying it and just like want to throw up. <laughs> Great. Same and Axel. Yeah. Um, I had to do a quick search because that was the one I didn't even, I don't even think I had that written down as EMI somehow. But uh, I'll go with this. Um, from Ray uh, talking about good old Stephen DeVore uh, there. And, or, not Ray. Yeah, but he's like, he's a good guy. He's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Which is <laughs> fitting. I could see that being something that someone would say uh, when there's yeah. like the one last guy on the, yeah, on exactly. the boat left over. Say, yeah. <laughs> Any, uh, anybody who drives a fucked up Camaro like that, that fast through my neighborhood, I'm pissed at. Yeah. yeah. Well, plus, like, <laughs> especially if he has cut off the love. things like already like a hoopty. <laughs> yeah, it's What's early it? '90s. That thing's beat to hell already. That thing's an '89. Yeah. <laughs> like, what did you do? All right. So, our top five list for this uh, movie was top five bad guys, villains, or or heavies. Yeah. Um. The heavy is the guy that makes you root for that protagonist even more. I want to see him really get this fucking guy. Um, top five list. Top five movie bad guys. I want to start. Let's start with uh, Sam and Axel, since you have your voice warmed up. Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. Um, I went with some, uh, you know, different uh, villains. I didn't go for, like, the icons or anything cliche. Um, yeah, no, I mean, Darth Vader. Got it. Yeah, yeah no, I went. Uh, um, I went for shoot from Vision Quest, Matthew Modine. Oh. There, uh, the classic, the best wrestling movie of all time. Shoot um, was the uh, the guy that he was chasing to uh, wrestle and beat. Did I movie. send you that clip? Did I send that clip to the group? What? Oh, Where he video. talks to shoot climbing up the fucking stadium steps with a log on his shoulder. You. You might have like a long time ago somehow, and I was Maybe. probably one of the few people that knew it other than yeah. your judgment night. Yeah. Shoot, I like it. He's a heavy. Yeah. Um because I watched it recently and it's a wild movie. Um I watched Arizona and the and <laughs> Danny McBride's character Sonny. Yeah. He's a great villain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the haphazard uh it's becomes a serial killer out of the circumstance. You're right. Great. Um, the accidental serial killer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did go with a, a you know, I had to go something kind of conventional. I went with uh, Silva, which was Javier Bardem from Skyfall. He was a great villain. Hmm. Then went back off the path to uh, Nuclear Man from Superman 4. 
he really gave uh, he really gave suits you know run for his money there. Yeah. All right. And then uh, the most outside the box, uh, old age is the true uh, heavy <laughs> in any of the lethal weapons. Because Murtaugh's always getting too old for this. Yeah, always too old for that shit. He, he was forty. Slowing him down. <laughs> forty. He was what forty when he made the first one. Fifty in the movie. Yeah. All right. Um, Sam and Joe, you look amped up. Let's do it. Top five. All right, top five. Um, <clears throat> in no particular order, I guess. Uh, and I'm not going to say what everybody thinks I'm going to say. Does you do it in particular order. With Deacon Frost. Um, I didn't even put him on this list because I thought that the last show we did, I already established where I felt about Deacon Frost in my life. As I thought person. Adam would put him on his list. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll find uh, out. Like, he he will he would be on this list, but the last episode I already told you guys that he was on my list. So this is another five that I really enjoy. I'll I'll Stephen Dorff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're gonna go with uh, Robert Patrick T one thousand. Awesome! Yeah. All right, it was awesome, right? Terminator Two Judgment Day. That thing was sick. Uh, another movie that I've seen a thousand times and love it every time. Watching this fucking fight, Dolph Lundgren as Ivan Drago. <laughs> what a right. dick! Oh, what a dick! Uh, <clears throat> probably from my favorite movie. Of all time, uh, Alan Rickman is Hans Gruber. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that. Um, and uh, this one, maybe Adam knows this. Uh, Madeline Madrigal, she is the leader of the Mama Clan, aka <laughs> Mama. Oh, from Lena uh, Hetty Dread. from Dread. Yeah, I was just about to, uh, dude. She didn't care about anything. She bit a dude's dick off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, uh, all right. Difficult to uh, ride a dick off, I'm sure. All right. Some right. well, people uh, pay extra for that. Even what's even worse is the. Do you see her grill in the movie? Oh yeah. Had it's to have up. that thing by your dick off. She bit that dude's dick off. She had no problem taking like oh, was that like a 25 millimeter cannon and just like destroying an entire <laughs> block city block. Wow. And then uh, this dude who. If he was an ice cream flavor, he would be pralines and dick. Right. His name is Benjamin Kane, Rob Lowe from Wayne's World. Right. <laughs> be pralines and dick. I watched Wayne's World this weekend, Joe. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, uh, I teach people about champagne, and I use the line from that movie. Yes. <laughs> accurate, though. I'm going to have to watch it again. We will. <laughs> Everything's a group project. Yeah. All right, Seaman Droop. One of those here top five. Help you, Rube. All right. I kind of went to like my top five like smart movie villains. Uh, starting at number five, just you know, since this this episode has been a bunch of full, full circles. Number five is the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they were scary as hell, dude. <laughs> uh, number four is I didn't go Darth Vader. I went with Emperor Palpatine. The oh. dude started two wars just to elect himself Supreme Chancellor, yeah. destroyed his original antagonist army, created the Empire, and then just went off from there. Um, let me see if anybody recognizes this name John Milton. Like from that, from uh the devil's advocate oh uh, yeah Pacino yeah that's cool um since I kind of did paint myself into a corner number two is Deacon Frost from Blade <laughs> <laughs> and then number one is uh Anton Chigger from Sugar. No Country from Old for Old Men I wrote Sugar. that down for you Adam that Javier yeah. as well. do you make all of our lists for us. <laughs> no, I, I, I often act like scramble to get this assignment done. So if you could just pass me what you think I'm gonna do, that would be <laughs> really helpful. No, um, and I'll just ad lib the other parts. When yeah, I yeah. thought of when I thought of good villains, Anton Chigurh was one of them. I said, Adam, I know Adam likes that dude from that movie. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Um, good list there, Judge McKnight. What's yours? All right. Uh, so maybe maybe not quite as funny, but uh, I went with uh, Andy Robinson as Scorpio in the original Dirty Harry. Talk about yeah. a freaky dude. Uh, Christian Bale, Patrick Bateman, Ugh. American Psycho. Yeah. Um, just because I, I have to have him on a list. He's not really the villain, but he's a bad guy. Uh, you know, you're supposed to root for him. Um, Frank White, played by Christopher Walken in King of New York. Nice. We have Max Cady, played by Robert De Niro, Kate I, Fear. Talk I knew about you were going to say that. Intense, freaky, scary guy. And uh, Agent Stansfield, Gary Oldman from The Professional. Hmm. All right. So that's 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 my five. Great, great one or whatever. That was yeah. a great one. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I had a, a Katie on my list. But I was like, man, I've I've seen this movie probably ten times in my life, and I remember one of those times was with you on the mess dance, <laughs> and you were like, "This is the fucking craziest bad guy." Like, you were very adamant on how how absolutely uh, uh, in love with I guess that character. I, I I really was, man. Like, I saw it when it came out in '93, and I don't know what it is. Like, you're supposed to hate him, but I I loved him in that movie. He's still a bad yeah. guy. Yeah, that makes but, it a good uh, bad guy. All right. Um, Sam and Molly. My turn. Um, let's see. I'm gonna start with the bad guy of my childhood, Hexus from the Fern Gully movie. <laughs> um, that guy freaked me out pretty hardcore. Definitely a bad guy. Um, and then another one <laughs> that I probably watched too young, uh, John Doe from Seven, Kevin Spacey. He's again like I like the the smart villain to, aspect of it. Um, like they think they're righteous. That's the scariest kind of person, I think. Um, I'm also going into the land of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World with um, Vic Hoskins because he's just a selfish bastard and let all the dinosaurs he just wanted those dinosaurs so bad for himself he screwed everybody over do 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 do, do. um hans landa from inglorious bastards yeah love mm -hmm. to hate that guy and then um thanos because you guys hate <laughs> marvel and he was a good villain <laughs> He was a good villain. Yeah, Thanos had really good lines. It's he had hard some not, good I, lines. It's, it, I think in the grand scheme of in the grand scheme of like bad guys, like in 10 years, 15, 20 years, I don't know. People are gonna be like, dude, Thanos had killer lines. Thanos was yeah. like, he was a true baddie. Because he was another one of those righteous people who were like, I'm doing <clears throat> this because I need to do it. It's the right thing to do, but it is the wrong <clears throat> thing to do. So those are my five. All right, yeah, I, uh, kind of all over the place. The John Doe one I did think about, and uh, and I wouldn't say you said you saw that one way too young. I think we, me and Herschel, were in the Navy. I was. Just when that came out. Uh, What's in I the box? You were saying you saw Fern Gully too young. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so. Um, I saw Seven when I was I was maybe seven. seven yeah, <laughs> like wildly I, irresponsible. <laughs> Wildly. Well, that's what you thought. Maybe the next movie would have been eight a year later. Well, I yeah. don't even know when did it even come out because it was a new movie and my mom was watching it and she was like, do you want to see what I'm seeing? And then I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that movie was good because they killed Gwyneth Paltrow. How's your goop melon now? <laughs> All right. My list. Top five bad guys, villains. I got Lois Einhorn, Ace Ventura. <laughs> Anyone who would kidnap Dan Marino prior to the Super Bowl is, is pure evil. Yeah. <sighs> pure evil. Have uh, White Goodman dodgeball. <laughs> oh, good. It's, fucking... it's my him. dream. It's my dream to walk past somebody and just knock their fucking Coke out of their hand or something, you know? 
Just get the fuck out of my way. I just want to do that. I'm going to do it in an airport one day. Um, I got Kevin Costner as Mr. Brooks. Hell yeah. And then I have Samuel L. Jackson, Jules, in Pulp Fiction. I mean, one of the funniest scenes ever is when he's about to kill Frank Whaley. And he takes a drink of his uh, tasty beverage, which is a Sprite, and eats his big kahuna burger. (laughs) <laughs> um, I like it when he says, does, you know, like he asked him what Marcel Wallace looks like. He said, does he look like a bitch? And they take that, does he look like a bitch? And they intertwine it into the Grease song. <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more. Does he look like a bitch? <laughs> I like that. I love it. And it's one of my favorite scenes in movie history. Yeah. Uh, uh, my number one is going to be Jenny from Forrest Gump. <laughs> oh, I, knew, I, knew, I knew somebody was going to do it. Yeah, she's a bad guy finally has sex with him after she gets AIDS. Come on. <laughs> Can't believe that. Person. <laughs> Terrible person. Terrible person. She took advantage of that poor boy. I'll tell you what, I loved her in Princess Bride. <laughs> Princess Bride. Robin, that was Robin Wright Penn, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so what we got next here? We got our uh, ratings for this movie. Um, yeah. yeah. I'd like to start with Seaman Molly. What did you think of this one on a scale of one to ten Dixie Cups? Hmm. Seeing how I was failing to pay attention while I was watching it. Twelve. <laughs> That's the good part about the movies we pick. You don't have to pay attention. <sighs> They're still getting chased. I was really excited. Okay, well, first of all, I was genuinely excited for this movie when you first announced it. I was like, that was a cool trailer. This looks pretty, it looks really fun. There just at least be a lot of action and maybe a couple like jump scares. Um, And there wasn't, it did not meet the expectations of the trailer, I think. Um, And I I was disappointed that there wasn't as much music in it as I thought there was gonna be. Like I thought there was gonna be like some sort of scene where they, run by like an a band like they're in a club and you can like one of those bands is playing there or something you know like the turtles when they go to yeah, vanilla yeah, like no, no no just like they're trying to get away from the bad guys so they go through a crowded club area or something and then that it just pans it's just like a cameo moment but not um anyways i can see that. Um, you want an onyx to live in the projects i'm just gonna give this a five because i didn't hate it I don't love it. I don't have very strong feelings about it at all. So we're going to stay neutral at five. All right. Seaman Axel. Yeah. Um, she, she neither agrees nor disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> very neutral. She wanted Luke to warm at best. She is. Yes. Yeah, she is Luke warm um, in this movie. I'm going to yeah, but- give it a better score than molly <laughs> well yeah i'm i'm I feel like seven seven's about right that's too All nice right. same and joe movie. you know it's good you, uh, same and joe you got a five and a seven what are you gonna give me I, i'm gonna give you a six you're right that's in the middle you're getting you're a reasonable person joe All I'm right. Reasonable, i'm a reasonable person because this movie is not great but <laughs> but it's very interesting i've already told like three people about it oh yeah i mean i'm like you know hey man there's this movie called, like, you wouldn't believe who's in this movie <laughs> right. and they're like wait what Dennis it's a Leary? conversation Emilio piece estevez cuba and, yeah and i mean just that alone i've gotten through like five conversations in the past month so yeah you gotta say yeah all right, Seaman Drew. So yeah, saw so the trailer, got super hyped for it. I want to see either a a shot for shot modern remake with over choreographed fighting scene, or <laughs> a remake where they never ne- they, where they ne- never leave the RV and they're they're just you know trying to make it out of this fucking crazy section of the city, not. Not supernatural, but they make it seem supernatural. But it was just like just this crazy trip on this RV going through the city. 
but um yeah crazy actors in this movie little it, it got dull at times this is the most 6.5 movie i've ever seen yeah um judge mcknight what you got <laughs> well uh, might i suggest if you want a crazy through the city rv movie you could try stripes right you, you want to give that one a shot but uh actually i i think this movie's better than it gets credit for man um it's enjoyable it's watchable yeah. if you want to take it seriously if you don't if you just want to make fun of it whatever you want to stereotype it this could be a riff tracks movie easily or it oh, could yeah. be taken on its merit as this is a decent movie i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the seven as well yeah. i um i said uh, this movie kind of fell off the face of the earth because it it's never on tv anywhere yeah. and then whenever i was just riding around i i know me and rocka were coming back from hockey practice because of where this song came on and i said oh i said oh shit I could fucking watch that movie. We could watch that movie that came out in the nineties. And I was like, I haven't seen that movie. I, I say I haven't seen it in over 20 years, 25 years, I guess. So it's forgettable. Uh, um, <laughs> it's not forgettable because I've been listening to the soundtrack every year. I listen to these songs all the time, you know, and it's just, it's forgettable because they don't put it on TV. Right. Yeah. But it's I mean, every piece of shit that they, all the pieces of shit that they replay and replay all the time. This one never comes on, and it's yeah. This should definitely get a play on TV. I could watch it on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, I think that's on it. TBS. Yeah, bring yeah, up it... uh, Shawshank and Rocky with uh, Judgment Night. There's probably yeah. some weird like deal that happened that fell through, and they couldn't put it on TV. Or you know, yeah, it's like that that's one that's very that fell through. That's very possible because you know the movie Rad, which is a very cult. 80s BMX movie. It's owned by Talia Shire because her mm. husband, Jack Schwartzman, was her producer. She owned the rights and she refused to release it and let them make DVDs and all that crap out of it. Yeah. So, so you can only buy it on VHS? No, you get DVD now, I think. I think oh, in the past year or two, but yeah. remember Paul White uh, from the Donald Cook, he uh, knew somebody and they, he got us DVD copies made. <laughs> you so. don't got any Paul White? Yeah, he was a Seawiz tech on the Cook. Uh, my last yeah, year on board. Uh, um, he wasn't Paul White, was after professional our time. wrestler. Yeah, <laughs> Paul Paul White. Yeah, one in wrestler. the same. Paul White would have been the regular show. Um, <laughs> my my rating is a seven. Uh, I give it seven Dixie cups because one, it's entertaining. I thought you know there's like scenes that should have been shorter. You know. Yeah. I just thought, hey man, it's a fucking hour forty nine here. Perfect <laughs> movie is eighty eight minutes. You could have shaved off that fucking hobo scene. Got it. There's an F shack going on. Yeah. <laughs> There's a condom in the corner with a baby mouse in it. Uh, <laughs> shorten this lips. scene up. Shorten that up. What was the other one that could have been shortened up? Thing I can't think of it now. Um, but it's just like they they're in a scene for too long kind of like when you know you get into like a long dialogue scene but the sewer um, the sewer scene dragged on a little bit yeah it's like come on get in and out of the sewer yeah. like once i know they're that. down in the sewer chasing me i'm finding the next ladder up i mean we're fucking super mario in this stuff you know yeah <laughs> up and down let's go so i give it a seven and since i hadn't seen it in such a long time once i started watching it started clicking back and uh it's boring at times and it's just like yes let's go let's move uh over choreographed fight scene i don't know a lot of gunplay in this one but dennis leary you know he was kind of at the height there he's always stayed stayed relevant though throughout the decades yeah he's had a couple of good shows um so he's, he's been interesting around to uh dennis leary was like friends were talking about christmas movies and uh someone brought up the ref you know yeah which is dennis leary in a christmas movie and then we watched this for December, so it's fitting and full circle. Yeah, it's good movie Judgment Night and the soundtrack. You know, like I'm the only one I know that has the soundtrack. <laughs> so it's just to let you know, ju just the movie to, poster is pretty legit. Just to let way. you know exactly uh, what you're dealing with here, uh, it, this movie came out in 1993. 
Yeah. Dennis Leary in 1993 was in The Sandlot. He was oh, in Who's yeah. the Man? He was in Demolition Man. He was in Loaded Weapon 1. He was in Judgment Night. And then he ran right into 1994. He was in The Ref, mm. Gunman, Natural Born Killers. And then in 1995, he was in Operation Dumbo Drop. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you that, put a button that's, on the that's, that's Andy's that pause his career for a while. Time. <laughs> Andy's favorite. He, he used to always make me watch that. And he was like, dude, CW3 David Poole, played by Dennis Leary, <laughs> is one of the finest acting jobs I've ever seen. It's textbook, he, you know. He, he wasn't right. lying, it really wasn't good. <laughs> What's our next thing? This is the uh this was the end of the season. We're gonna start season three well, soon. Don't we gotta do if it's um Paul Rubin. Oh, is this a deployment movie? Deployment movie. Yeah, that too. I'll start. This is definitely a deployment movie because you don't have to pay attention. No. Uh, let's go with Seaman Molly. You just said no. It's a no, deployment um, movie? It can be a deployment movie. Yeah. You can space out. You can enjoy it. You can tune in when you want. It's easy to you follow. Say, oh, I remember these actors. I like them. Yeah. And then I would keep walking. <laughs> and then when you came back 15 minutes later you didn't really miss anything oh, yeah i'm like on. oh that guy's shot now oh yeah. now they're in a sewer oh interesting all right semen axel deployment movie absolutely this is the perfect movie to call down to after i see tell them hey right after brunch judgment night <laughs> kick this off kick this day off proper okay semen joe something. he's talking about a Sunday brunch of what is it, hot dogs and pancakes? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm telling you what, I've never heard this movie just have heard of a movie described in such a way and how it could be a deployment movie. This is post brunch deployment material for sure. This is when you walk by and you're like, Oh, shit, is that Deacon Frost and radio together? And yeah. then you just immediately start watching it. And yeah. then you're like, is that wow. CW from Dumbo Drop? This is crazy. Is that <laughs> Everlast? Is that the guy yeah. from House of Pain? And yeah. then you just start, you didn't, and then at that point in time, you're just like, well, fuck it, man. This is a great movie. And I'm too full on goulash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so goulash. you're saying Eric Schrody, aka Everlast, he had his heart attack. Not long after this movie. There was a lot of running in this movie. <laughs> he had a heart attack when he was 35 years old. Oh, no, oh really? And then uh, I came back and did the whole Everlast What It's Like album. But you're saying in between brunch and still beach, you want to watch Judgment Night. Okay. Oh, oh, keep my... I may not be calling it up, but I mean, only reason I probably wouldn't have called it up is because I'd never heard of it until... <laughs> Right. But I will tell you this, that after watching it, I'm like, yeah, this is a perfect, like, Saturday, Sunday afternoon movie. Um, like, why it's not on TBS now is the real crime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they should be brought up on charges yeah. in front of a DRB right to Captain's right. Mast. <laughs> okay, TV Seaman Drew. <laughs> Seaman Drew. Deployment movies. <laughs> yeah, man, like. Like you're on the message and you hear all these fucking actors are in one movie and it's like don't move, don't whisper, don't even breathe, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? And then so you gotta sit down and watch this movie and it's like they're just being chased in this crazy ragged city all night. This is like the most deployment movie that ever <laughs> movied on deployment. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh I could hear you smiling as you said that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, and you know what? I think they shot this part of the movie in uh, on Great Lakes Naval Base. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it felt the like. Yeah. Those, those, I think I lived in those barracks, barracks in, eight, eight, <laughs> in, in tech the Born in the doors. <laughs> Old Herschel out Abandoned there. Abandoned military uh, housing. Herschel's out there fucking waxing the concrete floor in the gunner's mate building, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you guys remember that greenhouse? They'd have to yep. fucking wax the concrete. Over we there did. by the McDonald's. And shine the scuttlebutts. 
Yes. That was a All thing, right. man. What was gotcha. the name of the club? The, uh, the Nitro? Was it Nitro? Uh, at, at one point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was at one point. Um, The one in Florida was Portside. I didn't get to stick around in Great Lakes. Out of the two sides, Starboard is my favorite. <laughs> I always would take the starboard side of the ship up to the forecastle. <laughs> uh, Judge McKnight, is this a deployment movie? Uh, absolutely, this is a deployment movie. Like you said, you're already on the mess decks. There's a, there's a spades tournament. There's people playing bones. Um, then you got the nerds with their D&D Magic the Gathering. And this is on, and every one of those personalities is sitting on the mess decks right around you. Uh, yeah, you've got the guy looking at the Corvette, going, "Oh yeah, got one in the garage, right for me at the house." Dad's getting it cleaned right now. Mm-hmm. And in actuality, he's got that fucked up Camaro. But yeah, this is absolutely a deployment movie, hundred percent. Yeah, I could see like, like, like someone, you know, it's mid rats, and they go and load up their plate of chili mac and sit right on the they set their tray right on the table. Get on the IVIX, make a call after IC, and be like, "Yo, throw in Judgment Night," and that, and everybody's like, "Yo, what did he say?" And yeah. then you know, five minutes later, change the channel, just tuned in. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> Judgment Night. God damn. God damn. Judgment yeah. Night. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, does that conclude our evening? Great discussion on judgment. I'm glad that it's it's a movie that none of us have really seen, and those of us that have seen it haven't seen it in decades. Yeah, and it is one that you're just like, oh yeah. Hell, I've been watching radio lately, and I didn't even think of watching Judgment Night. <laughs> for it, you know, I have seen it's been on TV. <laughs> I'm, I'm an Ed Harris guy. <laughs> yeah, me too. Ed Harris. Wanna... There we go. What do you want me to do about it, man? Nobody picked him. <laughs> Nothing. Bad guy you be you, man. You be you. Uh, a good actor. Great hair, so, that guy. Yeah, do we have to... Unapologetic Ed Harris. So we're not picking a movie. We're watching... We're get, Are we going to watch Pee-wee's Adventure? Pee-wee's big Adventure. Pee-wee's big Adventure. Big Adventure, not Big, big Adventure. Topic. Yeah. Um, are we watching it, like, live together? Oh. Mm. Or, or are we just um, watching it and reporting back? We have a month to figure that out. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, cool. Uh, the EMI is just uh, um, come up with new ideas for next season, like new 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 EMIs you want to try out, new uh, sections, new discussion points, stuff like that. Right. Okie doke. And. Stop recording. Yeah, well, everybody say good night. Good night. All right. Good night. And watch Judgment Night. All right, good night. Also, get on our podcast and while on there as oh, well, yeah. look up the Spotify list because we're going to have some of these Judgment Night songs added to the podcast or soundtrack. Yeah, this. I just I didn't write this part down, so I'm just kind of ad libbing it, so it sounds like I'm an idiot. But uh, yeah. Yes. No, you sound great, Joe. You thank Click you for our, remembering to promote us. Click our sound links. like an NFL commentator. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Click the link. Ball, he really catches it. We just got <laughs> some uh, some new some new merch option yeah, yeah. for the um Sea Stories guys too, mm-hmm. the podcast that is run by two of these yeah, guys in here. Yeah. So uh, yeah, some so, so some shameless talking of everything else we have yeah absolutely plug but plug plug plugs 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 <laughs> that's actually a really good segue that should be the sound that we could play with yeah. do you want me to do it plugs. we could record it uh <laughs> oh, we're done recording no now we're done recording say good night good night good night, good night. <laughs>